Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game. We're back. And today we're going to be taking a look at... Well, I just actually kind of just pulled this off the stack. But uh, I'm looking at Joanne's, jo Jonah's life. Or Joanna's life. I think it's Jonah's life. And uh, basically what I'm doing here is we're just continuing on. Uh, we're, what we're trying to do is looking at code. Seeing if we can understand what's going on in the code. So we can go ahead and write a, a script. And maybe kind of shorten our scripts up. My good pal and mentor, Sneaky Mofo. He's gotten more into uh, just uh, defining bytes and do direct byte manipulations. If you can get away with it, it's the better route to take. Instead of writing these big long scripts. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to take a look at just a, uh, just a regular cheat. See if we can understand what's going on in the code and see if maybe there's something we can do to do a direct byte manipulation with it and it's all about understanding uh, what the program or the function is doing and that's what we're going to be doing today so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this out and there's uh, a a specific thing in this game where uh, you could run and you have a breath and then he gets out of breath and then it just slows down to a crawl until he catches his breath back so what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can find infinite run but really what this is about is understanding uh, the code process of what's going on with it and how we can manipulate that so stick around while we do that okay I'm gonna go ahead and get into the game bring cheat engine up and uh, we'll go ahead and get started I'm gonna go ahead and pause it while I bring up everything Okay, so I brought Cheat Engine up. I went ahead and attached the game to Cheat Engine. So what we want to do is go ahead and get into the game. I'm just going to click New Game. And we're just going to go from there. And we'll just go through the entire process of finding the code that we want. Seeing where it's at in memory. Seeing what's going on with that particular function. And then we're going to see if we can possibly manipulate that. So let's uh, wait till we can actually control our character here. I think my version's a beta version, so it is a little buggy, as you can tell with the uh, graphics, uh, the flashing of the graphics and everything like that. Uh, that's not my video card or anything. That's the game itself. So, But like I say, I think I got a beta version of it. But uh, it's still a pretty good, pretty good little game so far. Uh, I like stuff like this. It's, it's uh, kind of like a horror mystery type game. Uh, but basically what we're going to do is I'm just going to run up and down this hallway till I give out of breath and then we're just going to keep finding the code from there. So I don't know what we're looking for. I don't know what value type it's on. I do know that this is a 64-bit game, so our registries are going to be probably the high registry dealing with XMMOs and float values, maybe doubles. Uh, I think that's what maybe I'm going to start out on before I go to all and if it don't work I'll just delete this out so <laughs> you won't get to see it but if it does work I'll leave it in so I'm gonna start with a float unknown value and we're just gonna do a, a first scan search we don't really know what we're looking for I don't know if, uh, if the breath meter is starting high and going low or going low and going high so basically I'm gonna do the loosest scan I, I can do which is changed and unchanged and that'll give me both directions at once so Let's go ahead and get to it. We're going to go ahead and run down the hallway. Right now he's at full breath. Let's make sure we can move. There we go. And let's go ahead and give out a breath. And we want to do it all the way to the point where he's just walking and not running anymore. And you see there. And I can't pause the game except with a hot key. If I go to the pause menu, he's still breathing. He's still getting his breath back. So I had to set my... Uh, my pause to a hotkey and if you don't know how to do that you can do that over here in edit settings hotkeys right here and the pause the select process and I set mine to the P key for pause but that's because that P key is not used as an actual uh, key in the game so make sure that uh, if you do this make sure that your game is not utilizing that key for another function or you can really screw yourself up so so I'm pausing it with the hotkey, and now I'm going to do uh, my next scan. So I don't know if it's increased or decreased value, because I don't know where it started at. So I'm just going to do changed value. 
Now I'm also going to be using hotkeys for changed and unchanged, which I have set changed to the plus sign, and I've set unchanged to the minus sign over here on the number pad. So if you see it going by itself, I'm actually hitting the hotkey doing those same things. But I'll tell you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. All right, so we need to unpause the game. And what I want him to do is I want him to go back to normal breath. And I want to make sure I can run again. And we can, so we're going to hit changed. And we're going to hit unchanged while we're not moving. And we're just going to clear out. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just hitting the hotkey and I'm going unchanged value. See that? We see things just fluctuate, and sometimes you want to kind of move around, adjust the camera. You see how there's other things that change, so you want to get rid of any kind of camera codes you may have in there. You know, jump around a little bit, just, you know, just go to another room maybe. Just get rid of anything that has nothing to do with our run. So, there we go. And that kind of speeds up the search maybe a little bit. So, let's go ahead and give out a breath again and make sure our run goes to us to just a little crawl and we're just sluggish now so we're going to go changed and we need to unpause it now i could hit unchanged in pause but there's nothing moving while cheat engines paused it so it's not really going to do me any good so i need to unpause it and let it go back to normal and while it's back to normal i have to let him get his breath back and i have to make sure it runs on if you notice, we're still sluggish when we are in run mode, so I have to wait for the run to come back. And once it does, now we can do changed. There we go. Now we can do unchanged value. You see, now we're down about 34,000, so maybe a couple more times and we can start testing some stuff out. So let's go ahead and do that. And you notice it's just a lot of repetition. Now I'm finding these values. You, you just got to try different things. If you didn't find it the first time, don't get frustrated. Uh, sometimes it'll take you 10, 10 attempts to find what you're looking for. You just, you know, you just got to try different things. Just if you get tired of it and it's frustrating you, just set it to the side. Come back to it some other time. But don't, don't ever give up because you will find it if you keep looking. And you know, try to think outside the box for something else that may also affect that. So we'll go to changed, and now we're going to hit unchanged value. And it's not going to do me any good because the game is paused. So let him get his breath back. And let's make sure we can run again. Yep, he's still sluggish, so we ain't got to run back yet. Okay, now I can run, so I'm going to hang there for a second and go changed. And we're down to 16, and we're going to clear some of that out. So hopefully we can get down to just a few in just a moment. Let me just kind of walk around a little bit. Just, now we're down to 3,000. We just kind of come down here. Just, I'm not utilizing my run at all, which you got to hold down the shift key to utilize run. I'm just walking, so it's not affecting my run, so that value should be unhindered. So we're down to 2,000. So about 2,099, so let's do it again. And the reason I show this process, because this is a major part. Every single code that you want to find has to start here. Now you can do it other ways like going into the game files you know with other programs and uh, decompiling it and, and there's all kind of techniques you can use to find values and things like that. It's not written in stone that you got to do it exactly this way but for our purposes here this is the way we're doing it but you always got to start by finding that value regardless of, of how you do it. This is always the first step of any cheat okay it's got to be found. So we're going to go ahead and it's change value. We're down to 368. Now we're down to a, a decent number where we can kind of sniff around and look around and see if we can, you know, find something that makes a little sense to us. So let's unpause it. Let him get his breath back. I don't see anything counting up or down. I just see numbers changing. So I'm kind of looking for something that may be counting up or counting back down or something like that. He's getting his breath back. He's getting his run back. 
and he's got his run back so we're going to hit changed again and we're down to 255 so let's just kind of look around I, and the good thing about it, the game still runs even when I alt tab out of it so we can kind of look around and see if maybe something just stands out at us a lot of times I like looking for hundreds or zeros or something like that now sometimes you know with these bigger type games it could be like an all shoot like a something like this you know a decimal base you know but you know first try to get the obvious things first before you have to go trial and error a lot of these others because if you freeze the wrong thing you're going to crash your game and have to start all over again so right now we just want to look for things that kind of make look like they make a little bit of sense and uh, that's what we're going to do you know ones you know usually those could stand for flag type values maybe a flag's turning on and off uh, zero one or or one and another number uh representing a flag being turned on or off when he's out of breath or when he has his breath back so you know you want to kind of look for things like that too um, I kind of want to stay away from those decimals there's another one right here things like this 50 and 0.5 you know stuff like that kind of stands out to me a little bit uh, 101 just sitting in the middle of a bunch of zeros that kind of stands out to me a little bit okay so we got some things we can try here's another one I am I'm not gonna do zeros right now um, there's just a lot of them so you got to be careful with flags I kind of want to hang off ones and zeros right now if I have other numeric values to work with first I want to try maybe flags as a secondary if possible because like I say you get into that you start messing with the wrong flag and the game's going to crash on you or just really go screwy on you if you hit the wrong one so be careful with those but let's see if we can just freeze these numeric values and see if maybe that gives us what we're looking for and it may crash on me still so I don't know so let's see what we got going so I'm going to run and I'm going to see if we run out of breath. Ah, look at this. We're just running indefinitely here. So it looks like one of those numeric values is the correct one. Awesome. He didn't even give out a breath or anything. So we can go ahead and get rid of these fluctuating ones here. So we know it's one of these numeric values, so really it's just a process of elimination. So we just do one at a time. I'm just going to go from the bottom up and see if he gives out a breath. If he does, oops, sorry. If he does, I know that that was it. Oh, look at that. He's breathing hard. And he's sluggish. So we know that these two top values didn't have anything. Man, that's, <laughs> I didn't think we'd find it that quick, but hey, I'll take it. And you see it's counting back up, so it's starting from a high value and going to a low value, so it's like decreasing down to zero. When he hits zero, he's out of breath. Let's see if we freeze it again just to make sure. And uh, we can run indefinitely. We know that's definitely the one we're looking for. Awesome. It looks like that's it. We hadn't even hit our breath yet. Nope. That's it. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this out here so I ain't got a bunch of things uh, clogging up my memory. So basically I just want to untick mark this so it will count down again. And I just want to find out what's writing to this address. We right click on it. Find out what's writing. Go ahead and add the debugger. And if you have problems with that, make sure it's on VEH debugger. And you'll have to bring up a fresh cheat engine to do that is uh, edit settings debugger options right here uh, the best one to try to use is uh, VEH debugger if that doesn't work then you want to go try to use Windows debugger however you cannot change debuggers while the game is attached you have to do that with a fresh cheat engine with the game unattached and uh, so you know, try these different ones out if you have trouble with it crashing or not uh, working with a specific debugger you have three different debugger options you can use I get that question a lot. Hey, it's crashing down on me when I try to attach the debugger. You know? Especially with Dark Souls 3, I get that. So. Alright, so let's see what's writing to the address. So we're going to turn run back on and just see what's going on with it. 
We see that our code has popped up, so we know it's counting down. All right, looks like, and we hit our slug, and it's counting back up now. So we, we see two different op codes for counting down. Looks like another one is setting a flag, and another one's counting back up. And we have full run again. It's counting back down again. So we can kind of see what's going on with each op code as we see what's happening with our character. All right. So we know, just based off that right there, we know that this one is subtracting. Because this was counting down, we know that the value was counting down as we were running, and when we stopped, this one was being written to, so it's adding it back. So really, all we need to do is the first code that popped up was the subtraction, which is right here. We see that, let me click off of it, the XMM1 registry is writing to the RCX registry at the offset of 7DC. And you remember my past video where I described registries and offsets. You can think of a registry as like a huge big bookshelf and offsets are like each individual shells on that bookshelf. Well on this particular shelf is our run value. It's our breath value or however you want to look at it. When that reaches zero, when XMM1 puts a zero in there, then you got these kicking in. And we you know we lose our run ability. We can only just slowly walk until our breath comes back to 100 or whatever it was 100 I think so let's go ahead and look at that in the December so you know understanding that now you kind of got more of a game plan of what's going on and we're going to go we're going to go here and we're going to take a look and see what's happening we know that right here here's where it's writing at and you know if we want we can put a breakpoint on that we can toggle a breakpoint and it'll bring up more information for us, see what's going on with the stack, what's writing to it, what values are holding what. So let's do that. Let's start running. And, and there it broke, right there where it started subtracting. And it brings up information for us right here of what's going on in these particular registries. You see the RCX registry right here. And like I say, it's a 64-bit game, so these addresses are going to be humongoid. So let's see what's going on in the XMM1 registry because we know that that's the registry that's writing to our offset 7DC. So let's see what's going on in there. So we match that little arrow and it brings up our uh, floating pointer uh, stack. So let's see. We see that now we're down to 97. And we see that most of the others are not really being utilized. We see some other things going on, but you know I don't know what's really happening with that we see that what's really going on over here we want to go back up a little bit and see what's happening we see that we go all the way up to a return and we see that this is where our function begins this is where it starts subtracting till it hits that return this is where it's subtracting so let's go to the top and see if we know what's going on it looks like it's moving in our value that's the same registry with the same offset into XMM1. That's the same one that's writing to that very same offset. So let's see what's happening with it. It's moving down to the next line and it's XORing XMMO registries. That's the reason you see X, XORPS. That's uh, the command that you use to do the XMM registries because they're huge. They're huge 64 bit registries. We're not dealing with 32 bit, we're dealing with 64 bit but it's doing the same function and when you XOR two registries two of the same registries all it's doing is zeroing them out it's making XMM zero that's why we see XMM zero over here it's using that for a compare because we see that in the very next line a comis that is a compare a compare and it's comparing two 64 bit registries XMM registries so we know that the value was moved into XMM1. We say we started at 100, so it moves 100 into XMM1. It zeroes out XMMO, then it wants to compare. XMM1 compared to zero, which is an XMMO. What's it want it to do? So jump if it's not above. It's going to jump and skip over our subtraction if it's not above. Now we got to look at it. It starts at 100. Is 100 above zero? 
Yes, it is above. So it's going to bypass that jump. If not above, it's going to subtract whatever's in this offset. I'm thinking maybe it's one, and it's subtracting that, and then it's writing the new value into it. XMM1 is writing the new value. So it's subtracting. That's 100 right now, and then this is like the one, and it's subtracting and moving that new value into 7DC, and then it's hitting that return. It'll come back, move that new value, not 99, into XMM1, zeroes out XMMO, compares, is it still above zero? Yes, it is, so it's going to keep subtracting. It's hitting that return all the way down till it gets to zero. Basically, that means it's equal. Is it not above zero? No, it's not. It's going to jump down here, and it's going to go ahead and move the zero into 7DC, it moves that one into 8B3 for whatever that's for, and it's going to jump to where it's going to start adding back our breath and run and whatever it does from there. So are you with me so far? So we need to decide how do we want to write our code. We can do this several ways. We can just change this to where it's always writing 100 in there. That seems like the most convenient way. But what does it start out at? It starts out at 100, and it writes it to MM1, then it goes down from there. So if we're not using our run or utilizing our run, it's always 100. So why can't we just, instead of having it subtract, we could possibly just knock out the subtraction all the way, just put a bunch of knots, and it will still do the same thing. Or we can just change this to move 70C into XMM1, which is always moving 100 into XMM1, XMM1 is always moving 100 into 70C. You can do it so many different ways. But this is a new way I want to do it because we're going to use direct byte manipulation. We're going to change that sub to a move and we're going to change that 7E4 to the registry of 70C. It's always going to be above zero. So that jump will never occur and it will always keep going back and being 100. It will never subtract anything because it will always be moving 100. And this is what the code will look like to us. We're going to change that sub SS. <clears throat> and you have to use SS at the end of it with the XMM registry. We're moving a float value. And we're going to change that to that registry uh, DC or CD. I forgot what it was. But you, you get what I'm saying here. But before we do that, we want to go ahead and copy our code down. First of all, we want to make sure it's not going to uh, put any more bytes into it. If not, we're going to. If it does, we're going to have to do it a different way. But it won't. But we see we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got eight bytes to work with. This is a 64-bit game, okay? So we got eight bytes to work with here. So uh, what we want to do is we're going to we're going to be manipulating that sub right here. So what I want to do is I want to go to copy to clipboard and I'm going to put bytes and opcode. And I'm just going to copy that to my notepad. And it brings up my modular address, the array of bytes that it's This is actually the bytes of this particular instruction. This is what it looks like in byte form. It's the same thing. This is what the computer reads, and it interprets it like this just so we can understand what it's doing. Okay? But this is what it's actually reading right here is these bytes. And we have to see what's going on with the bytes. You have to understand what's called Indianness, and uh, you can look that up. I believe Sneaky Mofo gave a good uh, definition about Indianness in one of his videos, if I'm not mistaken. But you can see here all these zeros, one, and it's reading from right to left like this, okay? And it's reading this right here, and it's starting here. But that is those two zeros, and then the next two zeros right here. And then it hits that zero 07, zero 07 right here. Then it's hitting that E4 right here. So what do we want to change that to? We want to change that to where that 70C, when it's at 100, it's always writing 100 to there. So all we have to do is change that to move 
seven DC. And this is what the bytes will look like if you do that. Does it change or does it add or take away bytes? Let's see. We're gonna put move. And we're gonna change that to seven DC. And you see it does not change the count of our bytes at all, so we can use that. And that's what we're gonna do. And all we're gonna do this time is copy the modified bytes, just bytes, no address, and this is what we want to change it to in our script. But let's see if it works first, okay? We can't go write a script if it don't work, so. Okay, so now we have it set to move 7DC into XMM1. Let's go test it out. Make sure I can move my mouse, sorry. There we go, look. It's working. It's just constantly writing that 100 into that registry. So that's all we need to do. So let's go ahead and change it back to its original code. Let me go ahead and pause this. Alright, so I'm going to change that back to sub 74. My bad. Well, that was about to screw up, wasn't it? There we go. That's why we always copy our stuff down. Don't forget stuff like that, Chris. Alright. So now he should lose his breath again. And he does. And we're back to regular. Very good. So now we can just go ahead and write our script. We're going to go ahead and bring up our auto assemble. We're not going to... Uh, be using any templates we're just going to create our own because we got everything we need and you know playing the game and bringing it back up we know that these uh, modules stay the same this module here and this offset this address stays the same so we can actually use just that and I want to thank Sneaky Mofo for teaching me that that has really helped me out tremendously in a lot of stuff you can really learn a lot over there at that channel. So I'm going to put a link down there in the description. So make sure you guys go check it out if you haven't been over there. Great stuff over on his channel. Let's go ahead and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add that modular address. So it's going to go straight to that address in memory. And we want to go ahead and change that. We're going to define the bytes. I'm just going to go ahead and put the whole string in there. Just like that. That's our modified bytes. That's the subtract with the new, excuse me, I'm sorry, with the new offset. And what else changed? Oh, 5C changed to 1, 0. My bad. Okay, there we go. So we're changing three different bytes. So that's basically why I'm just using the whole string, because we're changing a couple of different things. Where am I? There we go. This right here is changed, and these two bytes right here is changed. So that's what we wanted. So to change it back, all we want to do is just go and declare those original bytes to that same address. So we're going to declare bytes, and this is when we switch it off. And these are the normal bytes. That's to subtract at the 74 offset right here okay so let's go ahead and add that to our cheat table let's bring up cheat our other cheat engine right quick let's move that out of our way and here's our script and we're going to put uh, infinite breath test or infinite run uh, let's put it infinite run infinite run test and what it should do is when we enable it, it should change that sub to a move, and it should change this registry to the 7DC registry instead. So let's do that and see what happens. And look at that. Move SS, 7DC into XMM1. Change it back. Does it go back? And it does. So it looks like we got a good code. Let's turn it on and let's go run.
He's not running out of breath. Awesome. Now let's go turn it back off. It should change it back to that sub 7E4. Now let's see if we run out of breath. And he does. And we're going sluggish again. So the, we know that now the code does work. As you can see, uh, we didn't have to write a, a whole long script. We didn't have to use a template. We can go in there and directly manipulate the bytes to change it to a different registry and change the instruction to a move. And that's all we had to do to get infinite run for uh, Jonah's life. And basically, like I say, these techniques can be used for any game. That's why you see me use these techniques all the time. You say, well, Chris, why are you doing the same things over and over again? Because they work for every single game that you want to try to hack. Okay? And like I say, this stuff, if you, if you just start looking at what's going on with each particular function, you can see what's going on with it, and you can get a better idea, and you can see all different types of patterns, and you start to see these patterns in so many different games, and so many different functions, it's comparing something, it's jumping to do something different, if it doesn't meet that condition, uh, you see it's the same things that we do to hack these games, that we've learned in the beginner sessions, up to the intermediate sessions, and now we're getting ready to and once we see and understand the codes and the functions and what each ones are doing, we can start broadening our horizons a little bit. We can start seeing more ways we can do the exact same thing. You know, there's so many different ways. And if one method isn't working, we have other options we can look into. And the more options you have, the better off you're going to be. Well, that's basically it. I'm I, I'm running out of time here. Sorry about that. But uh, I, I hope you see, and I hope this helped you a little bit. And uh, we want to get into some more advanced things later. But, you know, I just kind of want to ease our way into things, you know. If, if you're completely lost in this, please go back and look at past videos. Each lesson builds off a previous lesson, and uh, it'll catch you back up to speed. Also, go take a look at Sneaky Mofo's channel. Also, come over to our Facebook page and... Uh, I'll go ahead and pop that up here on the screen for you. We have a great bunch of guys that hang out here. Sneaky Mofo hangs out here. A lot of great game hackers. We got Benjamin. We got Ken. We got Binomi. Uh, we got a lot of new people that are great game hackers in here, and uh, they're happy to help you. John Cook. He's he's recently joined, but he's an excellent game hacker. He's also coming out uh, with his channel, and uh, he'll be and I'll put his link for his YouTube down in the description. And uh, he's an expert at getting around a lot of these anti hacks. I need to be taking some lessons from him and that <laughs> he can get around zine code like you would not believe. And he's a very good game hacker. Benjamin Clements, he is an awesome game hacker. Uh, he knows assembly inside and out a lot better than I do, actually. And uh, he actually teaches me some stuff. So we got a lot of great people here that can help you with questions. Uh, and there's a lot of people learning on here. And even advanced hackers come on here and help each other out. And everybody just learns together. It's almost like a close-knit family. It's, a uh, bunch of bunch of uh, game hackers hanging out here, and it's really it's really fun. So come on over here and join us. We'd love to have you, All right, guys. Uh, also, come check my uh, friends over at GuidedHacking.com. That's GuidedHacking.com. They go over C plus C sharp. Excuse me, C plus plus C sharp IDA Pro. They go into reverse engineering. Uh, these guys really know their stuff. Go see them over there. Tell them Chris Fate said hello. All right. All right, guys, I'm out of here. You guys take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, doesn't mind cheating you. Take care now. I love doing this. I love it.